So far, a lot of our exploration of geometry has taken place from a point of view of certainty. We want to know that two triangles or two figures are congruent, so we use some of the congruence postulates and prove that they must be. We can calculate the size of angles using parallel lines and transversals, and we can calculate the scale factor as well as the angle size and the segment length size for similar figures. This video is a little bit different. It's going to focus on some aspects of triangle geometry that don't result in certainty, but in a range of possible options, or just some comparisons that are helpful for us to use, and we're going to focus on some inequalities that exist in triangles in the realm of geometry. And the first question that we're going to ask is one that is actually very foundational, and we haven't really asked ourselves up until this point in the course, and that's, what's the longest that AC could be before we can no longer create a triangle? Is it possible to have a set of segment lengths that don't even allow for a triangle to be created? So go ahead, pause the video, think on that for a little bit, come back when you're ready to see some thoughts, and move on with the video. So in a lot of cases, we are going to be able to create a triangle. But where we really run into problems is if we have one side of a triangle that's a particular length, for example, but the other two sides of the triangle that we want to create actually don't have the ability to meet and actually connect because the two of them are actually shorter than the length of the segment that we have. Now, we could create a quadrilateral, we could create a pentagon, a hexagon, anything else like that, but we're not going to be able to create a triangle because the two smaller segments are actually too small. And that brings us to something that we call the triangle inequality. And it says that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. So let's change that right here to say the length. Go ahead, pause the video, copy down the triangle inequality as well as the inequalities that you see and the diagram. Uh, come back when you're ready to talk about it a little bit and then move on. So all of these inequalities are saying that any two sides of the triangle must add up to be greater than the third. But really, if we know what the three sides of the triangle are, it doesn't really matter what the longest side plus another side is, because if you have a side that's the longest side, no matter what side you add to it, it's still going to be greater than the third. We're most interested in this first inequality, where is the sum of the two shorter sides of the triangle greater than the third side? Notice there's not an or equal to, because if AB plus BC is equal to AC, then B is on that segment, and we have a segment, not a triangle. So what we can do with this is we can take potential lengths of triangles and say, do these triangles exist? Go ahead, pause the video, use the triangle inequality to determine do they exist or do they not exist, come back when you're ready to move on. So in the top left here, 5 plus 6 is 11, and 11 is greater than 9, so yes, this triangle exists. In the top right, we have 11 plus 15 is 26. 26 is less than 27, so no, this triangle cannot possibly exist because the two segments can't connect. Uh, in the bottom left, we have 3, 3 root 2, and 6. Well, 3 times square root of 2 is greater than 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6, so that means this sum is going to be greater than 6. And that triangle exists, and in the bottom right-hand corner, we have 3, 5, and 8. 3 plus 5 is 8, but 8 being equal to 8 means this is not a triangle, that is actually just a segment. There's one other set of inequalities that's important to look at, and that has to do with the relationship between sides and angles. Now, this is something that you saw in a GeoGebra exploration, and you may have noticed that when it comes to the size of the angles and the size of the sides in a triangle, the shortest angle, or the smallest angle, often appears opposite the shortest side. And that the largest angle, in this case the right angle, appears opposite the largest side. The same seems to be true here. Side D seems to be the longest side, and the angle that's opposite side D is the largest angle. And that happens to be true because of two important ideas. One is if one side of a triangle is longer than a second side, then the opposite angle, the angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second side, and the same is true in reverse. If one angle of a triangle is larger than a second angle, then the side opposite the first angle is longer than the side opposite the second angle. So go ahead, pause the video, write down both of these statements here, come back when you're ready to see the last slide. 
So basically, the larger the angle, the larger the opposite side, and the larger the opposite side, the larger the angle. So in these four triangles here, based on what we know, you're going to identify either the largest and smallest side or the largest and smallest angle based on the information that we have. If you're given the sides, find the largest and smallest angle. If you are given the angles, find the largest and smallest sides. So go ahead, pause the video, find the largest and smallest of the sides or the angles that you need, come back when you're ready to see the answers and wrap the video up. So in the top left corner, we have side lengths of 12, 23, and 30. That means the side opposite 12, because that's the shortest side, is the smallest angle. And the angle opposite 30, because that is the longest side, is the largest angle. So angle B is the smallest, angle A is the largest. We're going to go down to the bottom left now, just stick on sides. Um, here, our side lengths are 16, 30, and 34. 34 is the largest side, so E is the largest angle. 16 is the shortest side, so the angle opposite 16, which is F, is the smallest angle. Moving up into the upper right-hand corner, now we have some angles in the triangle. We know two of the angles, 107 degrees and 33 degrees, and we can calculate that together, that's 140, so the remaining angle is 40. Well, in that case, we have angles of 33, 40, and 107. The longest side is going to be opposite the largest angle, so GI is equal to the largest side. And then 33 is the smallest angle. So the side opposite that, that is GH, is the smallest side. Moving down to triangle JKL, again we are given two angles here, that is 72 degrees and 81 degrees. Together that is 153 degrees. So we have 27 degrees as a remaining angle, and since that is the smallest angle, we know the side opposite the smallest angle is the shortest side, so LK is the shortest, and the side opposite the largest angle, this is 81, means that JK is the largest side. So again, two important things about triangles. One is like we just saw, that the larger the angle, the larger the opposite side, and the larger the side, the larger the opposite angle. And then that any two sides of a triangle must add up to be greater than the length of the third side, called the triangle inequality.